What's up, everybody? Well, today I thought I'd go ahead and introduce to you another vacuum that's in my vacuum collection, one that I have definitely been neglecting to show for a while, and it is another rainbow. Here I have for you today my Rainbow E2 Single Speed. This is one rainbow I've been wanting to get into my collection for about a while now. Originally, I wanted the original E-Series, the first version that had the screw-on back cover. But I ended up getting a much better, better deal in buying this. So how I ended up getting this is I wound up getting the motor unit itself for only 30 bucks at a local pawn shop and it was running very rough and I turn it on and it would just make this loud rumbling and and it would vibrate very bad then later I found out the only reason why I was doing that is because the separator was damaged Apparently, whoever owned this was probably using this improperly and thought it was some kind of fancy-looking shop vac, which really, I despise those that try to do these to these beautiful high-dollar machines. These are not designed to be used as shop vacs. I will tell you that. So, I bought it, damaged separator, and a broken four-quart basin, I will add, which frankly I think is kind of overkill, in my opinion. And I got that along with a big 14-foot hose that unfortunately was not in the best of condition. And I also got the wet hose that came with it, and luckily it's, it's pretty good, in pretty good shape. And so what I ended up doing to fix this up was I basically bought a smaller two and a half quart water basin, put in a brand new separator, and I also did have to replace the back cover because the one of the cord ears was broken off. So I got this from another parts machine that's actually sitting right over there. And I robbed the back cover off it. And now I made a perfectly running machine. And the only thing I had to buy for it was the hose and the power brush, which that wasn't too hard to find. Of course, it did cost me a little bit much, but all on top of that, I, I at least kept the price under $200 in the money I spent to fix and build this. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and give a walk through the machine. The E-Series was one of Rainbow's biggest redesigns back then when they discontinued the SE, which was the later version of the D4. And definitely has a lot of upgrades. One thing that definitely did remain the same was the power brush design. This power brush, formerly known as the PN2, has eventually been called the PN2E. Basically what makes the E different from the regular PN2 is not just in hood design to match the the body of the of the E-series motor unit, but underneath is also another story. This was the first power brush to have adjustable wheels for different piles of carpet. Let me see if I can show you that on camera. Basically how, how this works is you basically just turn this little rotating wheel, which is pretty stiff at some times to adjust the pile of your carpet. And the wheels underneath will move as such. And when I bought this, 
it for whatever reason never came with a brush roll so I decided to bite the bullet and spend a little extra money to get a brand new genuine brush roll for this and I like the genuines a little bit better than the than the CWP replacements because this is the one that has the the soft brush strips that are very nice and dense but the reason why I like it over the aftermarket one is because it has these brush roll stiffeners on the back that kind of give the the bristles a beater bar effect for increased agitation and definitely helps good at grooming the carpet I will tell you that this has super strong agitation and right here are the two latches that hold the bottom plate on. Also, this little flathead screw right here is also to lock it down. One nice thing, because the original PN2, you just had to undo those two latches and off comes the bottom plate. And right here up top, you have your rotary knob, obviously, for the carpet height adjustment. You have your reset button right here in case something gets jammed in the brush roll and it shuts the power brush off. You just hit that to reset the motor and turn it back on. And obviously you have that little red indicator light to let you know that the power brush is on and operating. Move up along the back. We have here the cord sheath that runs up the back of the wand so that the cord rides in and it isn't dangling from from the wand and it gets connected right up here at the at the at the wand end you have a little latch that holds down the wand there and up top here is the early design handle the design is kind of a carryover from the the D4SE where it has the trigger to turn on and off the brush roll basically just hit that and to turn your brush roll on and let go to turn it off I think it's kind of ridiculous that that Rainbow decided to go to just a the trigger to be controlled with just one finger. I kind of like the gas pump design on the SCPE, in my opinion. It was just easier to just grab on. I'm thinking Rainbow eventually did this for, for a decreased fatigue on your hand. But it just, in my opinion, I kind of like the gas pump design a little bit better. It's not... It's not easy to to forget to turn it on. If you just grab it right here, see your finger won't won't hit the trigger. Or sometimes if your hand slides back by accident, you'll shut the brush roll off by mistake by not meaning to. Which is one of the reasons why I personally like the the pump style trigger. So anyway, we run back here. This has the shorter seven foot hose. There were versions of this hose that came in 14 foot configuration, which gives you a very, very long reach, which this had it at one point, but the hose was just badly kinked to the point that I just didn't feel comfortable using the thing without it losing suction on me. So right up here, here's where your hose connects in to the main unit of the vacuum. You just push those sides to release it. The hose has a pretty, pretty tight connection, I will tell you that. Right up here on top is your your tool storage rack for onboard tools. Right here you have your, your crevice, uh, crevice tool, upholstery tool, and dusting brush. This piece can be removed if need, if you want, which that gives you a look at the front front emblem right there. This is the early style gold emblem before the E2 two speeds came in into existence. So you just put this right here to have your onboard tool storage. You can either store this two ways. One, you could store it on the on the top of the wand on the power brush, which I honestly don't like it because it kind of gets in the way. So I like to have it on the motor unit, which is the most popular way to to mount the tools on these. And 
also to take the motor unit off the wheel caddy, you'd have to push this little pedal release right here. And then the motor unit simply just lifts off like so. The wheel caddy is definitely in, in pretty good condition, I will tell you that. So anyway, to set it back, you just you simply you just put it on the back and it'll latch in up front. And also to get access to the water basin, you just release the latches on each side. But you have to do again, press down on the pedal release to pull the motor unit off. But it's just only this time you won't pull off the, mo the water basin with it. Which this right here is its two quart basin. It's used for all the E-Series designs. These will even work on the later E2 two speeds, including the gold, blue, and black model. Here's the, here's a look at the back of the machine. Right here is the cord release. You just pull those ears in to release the power cord. And you can just pull them out to to rewrap the cord for later. Let's just leave them out for right now. Right here is your little, your little door that opens up so you can get access to your post motor filter. To get better access to it, you gotta hit the, you gotta push these two latches underneath. Ugh. See if I can do, do this on camera. Oh, right, here we go. But anyway, here is your post motor, your pre, or post motor, I should say, filter. This is the kind of the, the large cartridge design that was used on later models of the single speed E E2, E series, I should say. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. But basically, the one way to tell if yours is an E2 single speed or just a regular E series with the same single speed motor. One way to tell is the post filter design. The E2s have these big cartridge design filters instead of the the early model E series which just uses a flat HEPA media post filter and also another way to make that differentiates this E2 compared to the regular E E series are these two latches that hold the back plate on instead of just four rear screws, two down here and then one up here where this cord ear piece would be removable, where this one's permanently attached. So that is one way to, to split these apart from the, the regular E-Series. That's just one thing I thought I'd go ahead and point that out. For those of you who might not know the difference between an E2 one-speed or a regular E-Series with the one-speed motor, this is, in fact, an E2 single speed. So now let's go ahead and turn the motor unit on its side to show you the underside. Right here is its water separator. This is obviously a brand new separator that I had to put on. It is a generic replacement one, but it definitely works better. It is a little bit different than the original style separator that would have came on the early style E-Series single speed. This was the updated version that they'd put on. But one thing I will like to point out, the the one speed E-Series, e as well as the E-2s, have, or were the last ones to have this brass nut to hold the separator down. Later versions eventually went to plastic, just so they don't have to worry about rust damaging this thing and having it difficult to get the separator off for cleaning which speaking of cleaning you have access to your separator brush right here and this is used to clean out the separator in case it ever gets dirty i like it that they stored this deep inside on board so this part rarely gets lost compared to the d series which I have one separator brush for all my D-Series. But most of the time I just like to rob this from, from this E-Series to even clean the separator from my D-Series. But I digress. Here is the model number for the machine right here. See if I 
can get the camera to focus here. Oh, there it goes. See, right here, model E2. That's another way to prove that this is definitely an E2, not a regular E series. Manufactured by Rexer Incorporator in Cadillac, Michigan, made in the USA for household use only. And it says right here it's rated at a 12 amps, 10 amps without the power brush. So, yep, good old American-made machine. Definitely a lot of thought and manufacturing definitely went into building this. So that's definitely why they're they're so expensive. And also you're paying a little bit more just for the for the rainbow name because these are tried and true vacuums they're designed it's just the e-series is just the more updated one to have modern filtration so anyway let's go ahead and latch the motor unit down onto the water basin and the wheel caddy and take the already released cord and unravel it and Plug it right on in. It's gonna plug in the hose. Just lift up this little door right here for the plug. And that'll, and that latches it in. Just make sure you hear those two clicks to let you know that the hose is secure in place. And now comes the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on and give you a quick demo of it running. So, Here's the power switch on the back. One thing to note, the motor on these single speed E-Series have a very distinct sound compared to the two speed brushless motor design in later years. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Here's the motor turning right there. Definitely was pretty satisfying to watch this. Pull the trigger and get it up and running.
and smooth. You would have probably assumed that this thing had motor damage, but nope. It just had a broken separator. So anyway, before I end the video, let's go ahead and show you this thing in tool mode. And I'm going to go ahead and put that aside and I'm going to go ahead and fetch the wet hose to show you that it works. You simply connect it in just like that. And let's turn this on. Dusting brush. Upholstery tool. And lastly, your crevice tool. You also do have a little valve right here for suction relief if you want to relieve suction. Lastly, we'll go ahead and show you your bare floor tool. How this connects is take this little curved extension wand with the two notches right here, put it in upside down so that the lock, the notches line up to the bottom right here, then twist it to lock it in place. And now you've got your bare floor tool. Simply connect the wand in, and now you've got a functioning bare floor tool. Of course this thing would work a bit better if it was on bare floors. This thing runs very nice. Definitely has a lot of suction power compared to my D series. Connect the wands, unplug the wet electric hose. Now let's go ahead and plug in the, the main electric hose. Lift up the door to get the electric hookup lined up, and there you go. Well, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this this video on the Rainbow E2 single speed. Be sure and stay tuned and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.